All right, so at the time of recording this then, it's April in 2025, and Adobe have released some updates across Lightroom, meaning Lightroom on desktop, Classic, and Lightroom Mobile. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to run through those. There's a main one across Classic and Desktop, and also show you just a couple of things that have been introduced into Mobile. So let's first of all dive over to these two uh, web URLs here, the Adobe blog. This one here, I'll put the details of these into the description part of this video. This one here will give you details about what specifically has happened, or the updates rather, that have come into Lightroom Classic. So we've got the landscape masking, which I'll just quickly cover in a moment. That is obviously also in desktop. There's some other little things as well that have happened in Classic as well in April. You've got this section here, easily manage recent catalogs. There's something good that's happened to there. You've also got some other minor enhancements here to tethering. And there's also this checkerboard support. So those of you who like to use the crop and transform tools, you're now going to see a checkerboard as opposed to sort of like an empty white area when you're doing that. So that's with Lightroom Classic and in Lightroom Desktop and Mobile, of course, we've got the landscape masking and there's some other little things in here, but I'll come to those in a minute. But first of all, let me dive over to Lightroom to show you this landscape masking. So I'll just bring that up over here. Uh, I'll use it on this picture here, which I took this past weekend. This is a place called, this is actually called Pulpit Rock and it's in Portland in Dorset, where we've got the famous Portland Bill Lighthouse. Now, I appreciate it's a little bit underexposed at the moment. I took this with my iPhone, so I'm just going to use the adaptive colour profile. I mean, look look at that. I absolutely love these adaptive colour and adaptive black and white profiles. Really cool. I could keep it like that, maybe just boost it up a little bit. So now you can see it a lot clearer. So let's just dive over to the masking. And as, new, as usual, click on the masking. Now you'll notice you've got this one at the top here, landscape. And this kind of works like the people masks that we've had in Lightroom now for a little while, where it won't just select the whole person, it'll analyze the image and it'll look to see, right, what can I see in this picture here of this person? It's the same thing when it comes to landscapes. So for example, if I click on the landscape mask in here, it'll then start to analyze the image and see, right, what have we got in here? What can it have? And you see straight away that we've got three separate masks that we can have. We've got the sky. We've got a category here that's calling mountains. And we've got water. Now, let me just explain what these categories will include. Now, these, this is going to kind of expand over time, I'm sure, where, you know, the technology is going to allow us to actually isolate really like intricate areas of a landscape. But for now, just so that you know, the sky mask, well, that kind of speaks for itself. Mountains category that includes things like, obviously, mountains, hills, cliffs, and things like that. There's another category, architecture. That's going to select man-made elements. So, I don't know, houses, bridges, whatever. You've got vegetation, again, speaks for itself. Water, artificial ground, which will be man-made surfaces such as roads and decking and what have you. And then you've got natural ground, grass, pebbles, dirt, and so on and so forth. So, those are the categories that they've actually put them into at the moment. So, don't be surprised when you click on or see like mountains, it's going to select, well, something like that, which isn't a mountain. It's just that that kind of structure, natural structure there or whatever, is within that category. But I'll just show you how we do this here. Again, like I said, it's very similar to what we've got on the masks for people. But what I find really clever about this, look, mountains. Can you see, look, the red overlay? If I take it off and then put it on, the red overlay. It's got all the rocks and what have you selected, but can you see there's gaps in it? That's because that's where there's water, where the seawater has come up and created these little pools just here, look, on the rocks. It's not selecting those. That's how intelligent this is. Look, mountains, it's not including them. But if I go to water, it, doesn't, it does include them. I think that is just so cool. Really, really clever how it can analyze that. So we can use these, obviously, like any other mask. We can select individual ones like so. We can have it create three separate masks or just have it as one big combined mask. I'd probably suggest when you're using this kind of stuff, you're going to go for three separate masks. I would just then simply click on create. Very quickly then, you can see here, look, sky, mountains, and water. And then we can just use them as normal. Now, don't expect the masks to be absolutely perfect on the money every single time. This, this technology here, as it is at the moment, because it's going to get better, let's face it, this technology at the moment is here to assist us. So it's helping us to isolate areas quicker, quicker so that we don't have to necessarily, you know, make um, 
other kind of selections or work with other tools to try to get it to select that particular area. For example, when it comes to things like C, I, I love photographing seascapes. So many times I would have to use the range mask. So I'd kind of come into creating a new mask. I'd go to a range match, a color range or luminance range, and then try to click on certain points within water to select it all. And that was always a bit of a challenge to get it all selected. With this one here, look, water, it just selects it all in one go. So that for me is a big time saver. Not that I want to rush through my retouching, but just something simple like that is I can select it and then I can spend time being creative, making changes to it, enhancing the color, detail, and so on and so forth. So that I think is really useful. Let's just have another look at a, a different image here, one that I've added in. Let's have a look at this one here. So for example, this has got more stuff in it now. Um, here we've got our landscape. I'll click on landscape. It'll analyze the image and it'll go, right, what have we got in here? And you'll notice now, look, this is what I mean about it being intelligent. It sees that there is more available in this picture, hence why we've got more of these masks available to us. So we've got sky, mountains, and obviously the mountains does include hills and cliffs. We've also got architecture. See how it's isolating just the house. You've got, you've got to admit, that is, that is clever. That really is clever. Architecture, we've got vegetation, water. See how it's selecting the water? Even look in this tiny little area just up here, look, see? Water, and then you've got natural ground. You will find sometimes that the actual, some of the masks actually overlap onto others. That's just the way it is. You know what I mean? It's kind of differentiating between... Well, there you've got sort of hills and cliffs. They've got trees on, yes, but then you've got vegetation. So you've got like a mountain that's got trees on. The trees would already have been selected in the mountain mask, but they're now going to be selected as well in the um, vegetation mask. It's just the way it is. But obviously with these masks, we do have access to the add and subtract and all the other masks that we've been using for a while now to help refine the actual selection that it makes. So I just think that's really cool. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how this develops. I'm really looking forward to that. But very, very, very clever stuff, especially on that pulpit rock one. It recognized where the water was in those puddles. So that's really cool. So that's that there. But if I just dive back over to the browser here where we've got the uh, summary of what the updates have been in this April 2025 release, we've got this quickly share photos and albums in Lightroom Mobile. So I'll get my uh, my iPhone here. Let's just dive into, if I put a screen recording on. Let's just turn that on for a second. All right, so that's screen recording. I'll go into Lightroom. Uh, here's some of the pictures here. So let's save this one here. That's the picture you've just been looking at on my desktop. If I go into the masking, by the way, and click on the plus, you'll notice here, look, we haven't got landscape masking in Lightroom Mobile yet. It's bound to happen, but it isn't there just yet. But what we've also got here, look, if I just do uh, you know, a little bit of retouch on this picture here, I'll just click on auto, just leave it like that. What we've now got access to up in the share icon right at the very top here is we've got this share on web where we can actually get a link created for either that picture or a collection of pictures or an album rather, uh, and we can kind of send the person this link here. We've also got this QR code now where we can get people to scan the QR code and that will then open up that picture or that album, a collection of pictures all in one go. So that's really cool. Got the QR code there. You can obviously sit, you can copy the URL and you can paste it into all these different applications like WhatsApp on a messenger, mail, and what have you. Uh, and you can also, as well as adding photos and inviting people to actually uh, contribute, these people here, if we can see, look, if we go down to here, let's have a look what they can do. They can, they can view the album, they can contribute to it, and they can even edit the uh, images within the album, which is cool, just like on normal desktop and classic. You can also customize how the template template looks. So things like the date and the name in here, I'd maybe put in something like my uh, either my web address or my social media handle. If, if I'm going to give my phone to show some of that QR code so they can scan it, at least then they're going to see what my, my either email address, social handle is, or whatever. I wouldn't necessarily just have the date and stuff in there. So that's really handy. So that's that one thing there in mobile. The other thing to show you is if I just come down to, say, a picture of these people here, which is me, you got me on the left, you got my friend Steve Healy, Rob Dory, and Callum Richards here. We met at the Portland. This is where we were doing that picture. And what you've got now in mobile is we've got this uh, retouch button. You see this over on the right-hand side at the bottom here? So I'm going to tap on the retouch button, 
is then going to quickly analyze to see what people are in this picture. At the moment, it's on all. But look, if I tap on these little thumbnail icons, it'll, again, it'll move over to each of these individual people. And what you can do is it'll then say, right, what can, what's available for me to actually allow, allow you to enhance on these images? So like teeth. If I click on teeth, I can use this little slider here to brighten them, give me a proper Hollywood smile, or I can take it all the way down to look a little bit manky. But I'll leave it kind of halfway through. We've got the skin. We can touch on the skin. If I increase it, it's going to smooth it out. That's going to struggle on my face. Or I can bring it all the way down to kind of add maybe more detail to it. And then we've got clothing as well. You see, now look, it zooms out. I love it. It's just so intuitive. You click on clothing. It zooms out so that you can see it. And if I increase that slider there, that's going to add more kind of like clarity and texture to the clothing to make it stand out a little bit more. If I take it all the way to the left, it's obviously going to smooth it down a bit as well. But really, really cool stuff. Very, very clever. And obviously, we can do that on all of these people, or we can choose to do it on all of them at once as well. And it's allowing us to look at the eye. Even the, how small that is there, it's allowing us to even press on eyes to enhance those. So, yeah, let's just stop that screen recording. So, yeah, really, really cool stuff. I'll put the, um, the URLs, the web addresses, in the description part of this video. Um, but yeah, exciting times. Really interesting to see how all this masking is developed. It's it's actually quite uh, it's interesting to think that we did have Lightroom once without this masking. It's massively changed it for me. Having the masks available in Lightroom now is kind of like it's like having layers, like it lays in Photoshop. But the best thing of all is we can do so much now in Lightroom, and Every part of it is non-destructive. We can dive back in at any point. I, I'm finding that there are pictures that I uh, could only have ever done in Photoshop because of needing to use, you know, masks and layers and, and all these other adjustments that I can now do within Lightroom. It just blows me away. And this is really, this is just the start of it. It's going to be really exciting to see how things go. So anyway, drop me a comment if you've already been using these masks, see how they go. Oh, and by the way as well, when it comes to the masking, sometimes you might get, you might find that the actual outline of that mask is, you know, a little bit harder than you'd want it to be. I'm kind of speaking with Adobe to see if we can maybe look at getting some kind of a feathering slider in there so that once you've got one of these elements selected and masked in your picture, you could just tweak up that slider just to soften the outside a bit a little bit. So fingers crossed that will get, uh, get put into it. But in the meantime, you could just use a brush, a soft brush, and just brush around the outside. The hard work's been done. Selecting it, you can just smooth it around the outside. Anyway, I'm babbling. I'll leave you to it. Leave me a comment if you're using this stuff already. Let me know what you think of it. But yeah, exciting times. I'll see you in another video.